Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. It's another jam-packed, inspirational and fun 30 minutes. And we're glad to have you with us today. Jam, maybe some pumpkin jam on the show. We will see as Wouldn't we're talking. Wouldn't pumpkin jam be squash? I guess that would be squash. Never mind. Pumpkins are what we're talking about. Pumpkins that help you He's suddenly you not interested. Sleep? No, that disgusts Very me. Very good for you. Pumpkin jam, squash. Ugh. I like to play squash, but what can help you eat and sleep involving pumpkins, not the spice latte. We will get to that later in the show. <laughs> also today, a special story on the value of families volunteering together. And we'll bring you some important information about the event Brave Hearted Boys, which is coming to Lima this week. But first, our scripture for the day. Deuteronomy 11, 17 through 21 mm. says, Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land of the Lord, who swore to give to your ancestors as many as the days that are heavens above the earth. Well, one of the best ways to influence or teach your children as scripture says is to spend time with them. Family together time is for some families, unfortunately, a foreign concept, especially with the number of activities and projects available these days to pull families in many different directions. But Jennifer talks with one local pastor who stands firmly behind the belief that the family who serves together will stay together. This is a common sight at area YMCA's on Saturdays, kids, parents, blankets, chairs, swimmers. This is a swim meet, hours spent in the pool, on the pool deck, and parents filling in dozens of volunteer slots to make it all happen. Studies show that families who volunteer together are closer. In fact, according to FamilyFacts.org, youths who experience higher levels of parental involvement have better emotional health, self-esteem, and educational attainment, just to name a few positive outcomes. The Reinhardt family believes that to be the case. Local pastor Ed Reinhardt, his wife and son are all involved. Well, my position is an at-large member on the board uh, for the Lima YMCA Barracuda swim team. Uh, we've also helped out with the summer swim with uh, Westside. Uh, my wife's position is in charge of concessions this year, and she's dancing over to the side right now. Uh, she's so excited about doing that, and so we get to make the Sam's runs and get all the food ready and things that way. Reinhardt recognizes that families who work together bond better. The Reinhardt family aren't the only swim families where parents and children pitch in to make things happen. According to Ed, togetherness is a key to bettering our community. We all have gifts and talents and by using our gifts and talents in the community we can help improve groups, we can provide strength where others may not have that strength. One of the elements is the kids being involved uh, we've had our son involved the past couple of years, daughter was going to be involved this year. But it's important that we spend time with them and then them seeing us interact and it's a way of us supporting them. It's also a way for us to build family time into our schedule and Saturday's reserved for swim with the kids. Here are a few more stats from FamilyFacts.org that could give parents more reason to stay involved in their kids' activities and not just serve as chauffeurs. Lower delinquency in boys. Lower rates of teen pregnancy for girls whose fathers are consistently present. Less likelihood for tobacco or substance abuse. You have to have quantity of time to have quality time. You can't program quality time, but you can program quantity of time. Quality moments happen in that quantity. If you don't spend time together, the quality can't be there. It, it, you just, it doesn't happen. Well, I'm going to spend five hours of quality time with my child. If they're not in the mood to spend it, you've just lost five hours of quality time. So I think it's important that you spend quantity to have quality. And something else to think about, this comes from FamilyFacts.org. Those who have close relationship with their families are less likely to be involved in domestic violence, among other things. When parents spend time with their children, they also have the opportunity to impact the next generation for Christ. Lima Community Church is creating a positive opportunity for parents and their sons this week. It's called Brave Hearted Boys, and Andy is with the coordinator of the Lima event. Thank you, Mark. We're now joined by Lindsay Bush, the children's pastor at Lima Community Church, just down the road from us here. And our good friend uh, Lindsay has a lot coming up here. Tell us about Brave Hearted Boys. What made you bring this to Lima here in a, a week? 
Yeah, Brave Hearted Boys is an event for um, elementary aged boys and their parents. And the event focuses on um, teaching boys character values hmm. and um, moral values that they need to be men of God. And um, as a children's pastor and as I was getting to know, you know, a lot of young boys in our area and their families, I found that, you know, they are definitely under a lot of attack on their identities hmm. as younger um, boys, that a lot of decisions are made in, you know, the elementary years wow. that, that forward into the middle school and high school years that set them up for their future. And, you know, they hear a lot of messages through media, through TV, through um, you name it, just whatever's out there. Mm -hmm. They hear those messages and they think that they're to be this or that or that this is the, the common trend that they're supposed to be. And, you know, there's just so much out there to get their attention. And I think that as the church, we need to also be bold in our attempt to get their attention and to say this is what the Bible says that a man of God looks like and this is who you are and this is what mm. Jesus has for you and so it's a really fun fun event um, I love any event that we can bring in that not only gives kids a fun time but it equips the entire family so that the event isn't a one-time you know right. event it is a um, a starting point for the family to have more conversations at home and it really helps to equip the parents you know parents um, need tools mm -hmm. to help disciple their children at home because we know what happens at home is so much more important than what happens at church mm -hmm. and so we want them we want the parents to have the tools to equip them to help these young boys know how to be a man of God as they grow up and what those character traits are and how they're supposed to react to different situations. And so this event, Brave Hearted Boys, not only brings the boys in and has a lot of fun with a big super, superhero theme and all that fun <laughs> stuff, but it brings in moms and dads. Either one can come with them, even a mentor or an uncle or a grandpa or someone that's an active role model in their life as an adult. And they bring them in too, and they teach not only the kids, but they teach the parents, and they provide tools for the parents, the mentors, the aunts, the uncles, the grandma, the grandpas, to have more conversations um, after the event. So it's a great event. I love um, the fact that it does equip the entire family. So we're looking forward to having them. And what a great way to get the kids excited about it. Superheroes are so yeah. prevalent throughout our culture. You were just at Disney where you yes. saw superheroes all yeah. over the place. Yeah. This has got to be an exciting thing, some of the activities that will happen for these young kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of fun superhero-themed games, <laughs> um, as well as just a whole set that's going to be really engaging and exciting for the kids. And then there is going to be a time at the end of the event that there's going to be a superhero prayer time. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's going to be a time where kids can come and um, accept Christ as mm. their Savior, but then there's also going to be a time that they can take their prayer requests to God if they have things in their life that they just want to pray about that they need God's help on. Um, and so it's all about how Jesus is our superhero. We can turn to him for anything, and I love how they just use that theme all through it. It's a lot, a lot of fun. A well-rounded so. event, it sounds like, yeah. for the entire family. Brave-hearted boys coming to Lima Community Church. There you see the information. Tickets are $10 in advance. You can get them at the church, but there's also other ways you can get tickets. Sure. $10 in advance, and we have three different ways you can get them. You can get them at itickets.com online. You can get them at Gifts of Joy here in Lima, or you can call our church, Lima Community Church, at the number you see there on the screen and get your tickets as well. They are $15 at the door. Gotcha. So if you come to the door, we will definitely have tickets, but they'll be $15, and that's each, so for parent and child. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. So any boy in the area, any parent, if you're a grandparent of a boy ages 5 to 12, we encourage you to check that out. Lots going on at Lima Community Church. Brave-hearted boys. Now here's Dancy talking about physical health. Well, I am so thrilled to have Dr. Trudy Pieper back with us. Um, Dr. Trudy, if you haven't seen her before, is a naturopathic doctor, and she's based out of Johnstown, Ohio, which is in Southern Ohio. But I am so glad that you visit us here in Lima. It's such a, pl a privilege and a pleasure. I always enjoy coming 
Uh, the trip is uh, beautiful and yes. it's a nice time of year to be here. So thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. Well, we are going to start talking about something very familiar to um, folks right now with this season is pumpkins. And they are fun to look at and they make great pies <laughs> and yes. other great desserts, but they are also good for our health. Very much so. It's, it's always amazing that God creates such beautiful vegetables for us. And the orange gourd, and that's what the pumpkin is, it's a gourd, um, it has many health benefits. And if you will gather pumpkin, and besides enjoying the pumpkin pie, yes. if you take the seeds out and eat them, you will find it will help your sleep. Well, this, it's interesting that you mention that because it seems like just recently, over the last year, I have seen what's called pepitas in the stores. Yes. I've often wondered, are those a nut? Um, you know, I've purchased some, put them on salads, but that is a real valuable um, item there, isn't it? It is. Pepitas is, are just the seeds of the pumpkin. Yes. Where they've taken the white, thin skin off of them, and they've been roasted, and then you use them. They're loaded with zinc, which is good for men's health, particularly prostate health. Uh, they're also good high in a lot of minerals, but mostly, I see that they're best for sleep because when you eat uh, the pepitas, it goes into your system and your system then breaks that down and turns it into tryptophan, which we've all heard at Thanksgiving with turkey. Oh yes. But actually there's more tryptophan, it's an amino acid that is found in the pepita seeds. Mm -hmm. And then the tryptophan is turned into serotonin, which then is turned into melatonin, which helps you sleep at night. So if you eat a handful of those an hour before bedtime and you will find that your sleep is going to be much better. Is there a certain amount of time prior to sleep that you need to ingest these, or? It, it takes a little, digestion takes at least 20 minutes. Okay. So no, if you, if you don't do them for at least a half hour before, you won't see the benefits of that. Okay. To do that. And it's a handful. It's not like you have to eat a whole bag of no, them. No, technically it's a half a cup. So okay. it's just like a nice big handful of those to eat those. And, and additionally, it gives you fiber. So there is just nothing bad about pepita seeds. I guess They're not. And like you said, they also help with, um, those who might be suffering or prone to um, being diagnosed with prostate cancer. Absolutely, and um, the, the zinc in them is very high. And so you, it's even you can get more zinc from eating the handful of, of seeds than you can from taking a zinc capsule or tablet. So, and it's always better to take your, your minerals and vitamins naturally whenever you possibly can. Yeah. Another good thing about them is they're very alkaline. And most people today, their diets are such that we have a very acid diet. And we know the acid promotes illness. Okay. So anytime you can eat a food that's going to alkalize your body, you absolutely should eat it. Okay. So um, for those of us who are using pumpkins right now as decorations, I, unfortunately, a lot of times they get thrown into the garbage, yes. tossed out into the field. Um, what can we do to make our own? Do we always have to go to the grocery store for these? Absolutely not. It is so simple. Once you pull those seeds out of the pumpkin, mm -hmm. rinse them off a little bit, pat them down, you take them and then you will uh, put them in water and boil them in salted water for about 20 minutes. Drain them off, put them on a cookie sheet, drizzle them with some extra virgin olive oil, bake them for, roast them about 400 degrees for 10 minutes, flip them over, and roast them again, pull them out, cool them down, and eat them. So th the seeds themselves are covered yes. um, in a harder shell. Are we able to eat those as well? Yes, the shell doesn't hurt you, it's more fiber, but okay. it, they, once you roast them, it comes off very easily. Oh. So it's a very easy thing to roast them and just kind of just rub them in your hands or take uh, something to go over them, and those, the, the little thin white will come right off of them. Okay. You know, the sleep um, issue is a huge one. Um, for a lot of people today. I don't know, um, you know, in your practice, if you've noticed a greater degree of stress um, or what is causing our sleep problems right now? People are more sleep deprived. Um, we're too busy. Is that what it is? I, I really think that people plan too much in a day's time. And then by the time it's time to relax, they cannot relax and go to sleep. And I see that a lot in my practice. I just, I'm just, you know, they're so tense and they have so much going on. They've done so much caffeine and so much sugar throughout the day. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. They're pushing their adrenals to the max. And what happens then, it shoots out cortisol. And so cortisol should be lower at bedtime so you can sleep. What we're doing is we're pushing ourselves so hard that we are, our cortisol level is still high at nighttime and it's very hard to go to sleep. And I bet you doctors um, <laughs> suffer the same uh, symptoms, don't they? Absolutely, mm -hmm. we do. It's always hard. Um, I personally have to drink a cup of chamomile tea 
uh, every night when I get ready to settle down. It calms my nerves, calms my brain, helps me not to think about things and do something very relaxing. Um, either watch something on television that's very, uh, not that I don't have to think a lot about, entertaining, right. and then I'm ready to go to sleep. Okay. So um, getting back to the pumpkin seeds again, this is really relatively easy. And I have had the um, pepitas before. And it's not a, a, a distinct taste, really, is it? It is not. Uh, I don't think they have much taste at all, no, personally. No. And like you said, to put them on your salads, mm -hmm. it's a great way to use them. The throw them on there, it just gives a little crunch. It's like having the crouton. It's just a little yeah. crunchy taste to it, a little variety to that. Yeah. So add them whenever you possibly can. Okay. They're economical, they're easy, and get your husbands uh, to eat them. Absolutely, and my husband is the one who has the sleep issues in our family, so there, there we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Trudy Pieper, thank you so much for being with us again. Thank you, my pleasure. All right, back to you. Well, thank you, Dancy. And now that we've learned about the health benefits of pumpkin seeds, it's time to learn how exactly we go about making those in this week's Lost Creek Rehabilitation Care Center's food segment. Joining me is our usuals, Jennifer and Andy. And Good to know guys, usual. I've been excited for this one. Pumpkin Just seeds passed. are one of my favorite. And so this is going to be a, a good fall recipe to explore. Looking I love forward pumpkin to it. seeds. We're going to get messy, right? That's right. We're going to start actually with messy pumpkin? getting the seeds out of the pumpkins. And you can see we have one. Why, why do you have the massive pumpkin? <laughs> it, this seems like it should be swapped here. We are going to start out by cutting open our pumpkins and getting those seeds out. So. As always, we have our knives. <laughs> this is making me This nervous. is very dangerous. <laughs> do not do this at home. <laughs> so, many of you may have cut pumpkins before in your you life. Ready? Maybe you're a Am first timer. Doing, but I'm doing this one, right? I don't know. That doesn't look Whatever like Zach tells us. Go right ahead. I'm going to start from the top and cut open a cap. That's not a good knife. I'm going to snap it. Try this one. You know, this maybe was not the... We should have had them pre-cut. Efficient <laughs> idea. Whose idea was this? Now we should point out that there are, um, I think, literally a million pumpkin seed recipes out there we today. You can you find them nice. <laughs> on the internet, and it really just uh, involves a variety of seasonings and pumpkins. maybe sweet and spicy. So Did you if you have open? your own recipes, no. I've already um, finished. Feel free to send them in. Oh, look at that! Andy's already got his out. Hey, there's some seeds. There are some seeds in there. Jennifer, you need to finish your pumpkin here. I will finish this, and you can see there, there are some seeds right there, but go ahead and begin to get the seeds out, Andy. <laughs> there we go. How many seeds do you think My hand are? doesn't fit in there. I wasn't really thinking well. You know, I'm... Is... <laughs> so you just eat them, Zach? Yeah. No, you're Good not mind. going to eat them. <laughs> no need to get. Okay. What we're going to do okay. is get as many seeds out as possible. Okay. So let's continue on maybe one more minute here to see how many you can get out. We actually have some prearranged <laughs> seeds. <laughs> Just as a fail slippery. Yeah, you know, isn't it incredible how many seeds are in one pumpkin? I'm always amazed at the way God creates things. Look at how many pumpkins you could get out of a seed like this. Hmm. So you're going to start a pumpkin patch? Hmm. Not a bad thing to do. Is that allowed do. in downtown Just, Lima? I don't know. I don't know. We can't have chickens. No but chickens. Maybe we can have <laughs> pumpkins. <laughs> All right. So how many seeds do you have there? 17. Well, that'll be a decent number. Or as my son Nathan would say, 10,632. All right, I think we'll, we'll look at here. Hey, look at that. Uh, I can reach into that one. Yep. All wow. kinds of seeds right wow. there. Wow. Oh my, now the seeds from the larger pumpkin are, they bigger? are bigger than the seeds from the smaller pumpkin, which I guess would probably make sense. People at home <laughs> are thinking, well, yes, Jennifer, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> and so what you're going to do is you're going to get as many, hopefully all of the seeds out of the pumpkin. Of course, you can carve, you can scrape, you can grind them out of there. Collect your seeds, just as you're doing there. And uh, what we're going to work with here, because what you want to do is actually put those seeds in a strainer and wash them off. Hmm. Um, we have a, a bowl here of washed seeds and dried seeds, because what you do after you have them in the strainer and wash them off, you're going to actually spread them out and pat them down in order to dry them off. Nope, so we'll move this out of the way and grab our dry seeds there, Andy, and then the bowl. Should we grab them with our pumpkin hands? Yeah. That's, I don't think we have too many cleaning products here on set. But you're going to lay the pumpkin seeds out. Now, hold on one moment. We don't have any parchment paper, I don't see. Oh. We, do. we do here. OK. That's the, that's the secret, isn't it? You're going to lay your parchment paper over your sheet before you spread these seeds out. What does the parchment paper do, Zach? Uh, prevents the seeds from sticking to the pan. So. 
Andy, why don't you do that? And Jennifer, you're going to help me prepare the actual seasoning and glaze that'll go over the seeds. Okay. There's a glaze. Thanks. Yes. Today's recipe, that, and as I mentioned, there are a variety of recipes. Now, Andy, you do want to spread them out so that they are up. evenly spaced. But today's recipe is going to call for a variety of ingredients. One teaspoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of maple syrup. Sorry, I was hiding the dirt on the side of the pumpkin. That's right, an eighth teaspoon of cayenne okay, pepper. Okay, what was this again? Pumpkin? Yep, we're starting with the oil. How much olive oil? It's going to be one teaspoon. That looks like fancy olive oil over there. Is that from Italy? Napa Valley, perhaps? Now Meyer. we're going to do maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> How much maple syrup? This is going to be a uh, one tablespoon. Are they allowed to be touching the seeds? They can be if you have too many, but you just want to spread them out as much as possible. Okay. One I think tablespoon. you still have room to work with the uh, pan there. Uh. Then it's going to be cayenne powder, which is an eighth teaspoon of that. Cayenne that some, makes it hot. Some kick. There's a little bit of spice in it. Hmm. That's pretty healthy though, right? Cayenne pepper. I think it's, you know, if you have a cold. And get rid of whatever's in your nose. And then we're doing sea salt here, a quarter teaspoon. Oh. And this is all going to be mixed in the bowl because what we will end up doing is spreading these over the seeds. And we're going to actually toss the seeds in the bowl along with the seasoning. So Andy, it looks Andy, like you've got. You I'm going to roast it over the fire. <laughs> and the last roast ingredient it, right? here is we do rice? have cracked pepper, and we're going to. Put this, you can do about five turns or so, depending on how much pepper you want in your seasoning, into the bowl here. All right, so Jennifer, you have our mixture ready? We need to get him something to do. He's, yes. He's, he's... So, Andy, why don't you put the that seeds... That looks amazing. Put the seeds where? In here? Mm -hmm. Just do one <laughs> seed at a time. <laughs> you eat it? You don't no. want to eat it yet, no. Ah! So, we okay. could, actually, we, I think, oh, took one step too far. We could have put the seeds in the bowl first, toss them around, and then spread them out oh. on the pan. So I okay. know that you worked hard there. <laughs> oh no, pants, all my efforts. <laughs> but just gonna gonna dump these in. And then just gonna toss them around a little bit. Try to get them well covered on both sides. Hmm. Jennifer, you look like you've done this once or twice. No, you know, this is new for me, but I have been in the kitchen a few times <laughs> in my life. The seeds are chewy. Is that because we haven't cooked them yet? That is because we have not cooked them yet, yes. So, am I going to get sick? No. You, you know need that. get a pumpkin growing inside you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that looks pretty that well look? coated. And so now, Andy, once again, you're going to spread them across. I, I've done this so before. You did it so well yeah. the first time. We're going to let you do it a second time. <laughs> and really, this Gooey. is a simple way to create a, a relatively healthy snack. Once you mix these and coat the seeds, you're only going to put them in the oven recommended around 17 to 20 minutes, but what we found is that maybe a little longer, somewhere around 25 to 27 minutes is gonna get you a better result. Of course, you can test the seeds, see how dried out, how um, well-baked they are. This is challenging. They stick together. They're sticky now, huh? Yeah. So can you make like chocolate chip cookie seeds? I have seen sweetened public pumpkin seeds. Chocolate chip cookie seeds? Is that what you asked? Yeah. I don't think the chocolate chip cookies grow from seeds. <coughs> got a, got a little pepper there. <laughs> Well, cayenne in the in the palate. They and smell good though. You can smell the maple syrup. And so we would have our, our oven preheated at 350 degrees, and that's where you're going to bake these for what we found to be around 25 to 27 minutes. You can maybe determine. No. Depends on your oven. So once we've thrown them in the oven, we will end up with a final product. Voila! Magical oven back here. And if you can see that at home. Those look very nice. They are very Ooh. nice. They're very tasty. They're, much, they're just darker. Just enough spice. Oh, There's there. a little bit of sweet from not the maple syrup. Less chewy. Mm, crunchy. Not quite. Yep. It, what you want is that nice crunchy um, texture. So that's a good way to judge whether or not they've mm. been in the oven long enough is how um, crunchy they are. It reminds me of like the flavored popcorns that you can get, mm. the specialty popcorn. The glaze on the outside. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so again, a quick, easy, healthy snack. Something mm. fun to do with the kids at home too. Maybe cut open your pumpkins that you have had from the fall decorations and pull out the seeds and create your own recipe. There's, <clears throat> there's a variety of you seasonings. You got some cayenne, too. <laughs> I do have some <laughs> variety of things that you can cover these seeds in. And really, just it's fun to explore. So, what do you guys think? I love it. 
Sorry, Italian I got the pepper sketch. in my <laughs> I told you, we need milk every food segment, <laughs> every week. That's milk gonna wrap it solution. up for us. Of course, you can find this recipe on our Faith and Friends website if you go to WTLW.com. And again, as always, submit your own recipes. We'd love to hear from you guys and your own experiences with pumpkin seeds. Trying to make the basket. Mark, what are you doing? It's basketball take it season. away and show us how exactly the viewers can connect with us in social media. Thank you, Zach. Quick reminder now how you can stay connected with us and with TV44. Facebook, look for WTLW TV44. There's also a WTLW Twitter account. You can find us individually on Twitter at Andy Lynch44, Jen Beck44, Matt Finkel44, Bauer Z, or Mark Kuntz44. You can also reach us through email, either at contact at WTLW.com, or you can email your prayer request to prayer at WTLW.com. Another way to partner with us is through our annual pledge campaign, which is now underway. If you were on our mailing list, then last week you should have received the latest Take One newsletter that also included a letter from Jennifer talking about this fall's campaign. And also it has our latest programming guide. We've got some special programming things to tell you about. But you know that letter, Kevin asked me to write the letter this year, and I, I actually considered it to be an honor to have an opportunity to speak to all of you as we move into this very important time of our preparing for the 2015 budget. And one thing that I mentioned in there was when I first came to TV44 in the early 90s, um, I knew God in my head, but I didn't know God in my heart. And you know, I have to give the station the credit for really making, being what connected those dots. And I just believe that that's probably the case for a lot of people as mm -hmm. well. And what a, what a value we have in this area to have this station. Um, I took it for granted for a long time and felt bad about it because it's not guaranteed to be here. We do need to work together to make sure we keep it alive. Really got to taste that in Ron Miles' memorial service that mm -hmm. was here. Uh, that you'll be able to see on TV 44 coming up, but just how this pioneer started mm -hmm. this station and how for 30 plus years it has been proclaiming the Word of God. You can learn more about this year's Pledge Drive by visiting WTLW.com or call 419-339-4444. We look forward to hearing from you as we plan to continue what Ron Miles started years ago and so many people here in the area, spreading the good news of Jesus via the television airwaves throughout 2015. And on that note, we'll bring this edition of Faith and Friends to a close. And thank you in advance for your partnership with two TV44 as we prepare for 2015. And a reminder that you can watch the segments from this show online at WTLW.com. Just click on Faith and Friends. And now we'll close with our verse. Zach. Deuteronomy 11, 17 through 21 says, Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that are that are that the heavens are above the earth. What a great reminder for our families, for us that are teaching our children, for those of us that are just walking Bind them on your hands and just keep them in the forefront of your mind and that will give you a fulfilled life.